We'll continue with our bad news. Let's examine some bad news strategies. So you have the direct strategy and you have the indirect strategy. The direct strategy is an organizational strategy that describes an order in which the main idea comes first, followed by details, an explanation, or evidence. This is used when the writer expects to be pleased, mildly interested, or neutral. The indirect strategy is an organizational strategy that describes placing the main idea later in a message after the details, explanation, or evidence. This is used when the writer expects the reader to be uninterested, displeased, or hostile. Figure 7.1 compares the direct and indirect strategies for bad news messages. So if the bad news are these things, then you're going to do the direct strategy where the bad news comes direct at the beginning. And then if you use the indirect strategy, the bad news is going to come at the end. There's a model document that provides an example of announcing negative news directly. And it's going to be, remember, the direct strategy is going to be used when it, the bad news is not damaging. When the receiver may overlook the bad news, so you've got to, you've got to say it up front. When the organizational receiver prefers directness, that's why it's called the direct strategy, and when you have to be firm. So this is an, a letter where you're announcing a negative news directly. You're going to use the urgent action is needed to prevent identity theft. You are contacting them about a potential problem involving identity theft. So it's right at the beginning. And then it suggests recommended steps and provides helpful information. Give reasons for the recommended action. Provide contact information and other additional pointers. And then end by providing more helpful information, company phone number, and offer one of one year for a free credit monitoring. So this is a great example of the direct strategy. For the indirect strategy, here are some situations in which this would work. When the bad news is upsetting, you expect a hostile reaction. When the bad news threatens a customer relationship and when the bad news is unexpected. So there is a four-part indirect strategy for negative news. You're going to have a buffer, not mention the bad news, open with a meaningful statement, then explain the causes of the bad news before disclosing it, then finally reveal the bad news, and then close with a pleasant statement. So model figure 7.2 is going to provide an illustration of the four-part indirect strategy for negative news. So here is the figure and this is exactly what we discussed on the slide. Some worry that the indirect strategy is unethical or manipulative because the writer deliberately delays the main idea. Breaking bad news bluntly can cause pain and hard feelings, so that may be why you would want to use the indirect strategy. By delaying bad news, you're softening the blow somewhat, as well as ensuring that your reasoning will be read. The indirect strategy should not be used to avoid or misrepresent the truth. Here's an, an exercise that you can do, and you can divide your paper into two columns, label the first column direct strategy and the second column indirect, 
and then in the first column list the reasons why you might use it direct and second column list why you might use indirect and you can do that as practice this will help you go over what we learned so you may want to pause it and do that but i'm going to go ahead and show you those answers So this shows you when to use the direct and when to use the indirect.